Star Surgical's Vizian Implantable Collimer Lens, or ICL, offers a new, innovative option to your patients and to your refractive practice. Viewing this program will provide you with the information you need to familiarize yourself with the Star Surgical ICL. This chapter will guide you through the entire process of patient selection, preoperative planning, and loading the ICL into the STAR ICL injection system. A critical step in preoperative planning is the selection of the best candidates, particularly for your first 20 cases. The best initial patients are myopic and between the ages of 21 and 45. They have had no previous ophthalmic surgery and especially no previous corneal refractive surgery. The pre-op exam should include the following tests, manifest and cycloplegic refractions, keratometry, anterior chamber depth or ACD, pachymetry, measurement of white to white, slit lamp examination, IOP check, gonioscopy, endothelial cell count, and retinoscopy. A minimum ACD of 3 mm is required. For the purpose of candidate selection, the ACD is defined as the distance from the corneal endothelium to the anterior lens capsule. Determine the ICL length. A nomogram using a combination of white to white and ACD is utilized. The measurement of white to white is critical. Physical measurement with calipers is one of the most reliable methods for obtaining the measurement. Validate the measurement with a corneal topography unit, such as orb scan. Evaluate any discrepancies between measuring devices. Sometimes a pterygium or other anomaly can cause a discrepancy, as can improperly calibrated calipers. When measuring white to white, use topical anesthesia and magnification while physically touching the eye for accuracy. Remember, the ICL is not recommended with an ACD of less than 3 mm. One to two weeks before implantation, it is necessary to perform peripheral laser iridotomies, or PIs. PIs are necessary to provide an outlet for aqueous flow around the lens and to facilitate complete removal of viscoelastic during surgery. They are recommended two weeks prior to surgery to allow the deposit and reabsorption of the pigment and the humeral factors of inflammation. It is suggested to utilize an yttrium aluminum garnet or YAG laser or a two-step laser procedure by pre-treating with an argon laser followed by neodymium YAG PI. Two PI should be placed superiorly 90 degrees apart in the mid-periphery. Each PI should be at least 0.5 millimeters in diameter. Typical post-laser treatment medication includes prednisolone acetate 1% drops four times per day for seven days. It should be noted that these procedures generate the most patient complaints. Using the STAR ICL injection system, the ICL is injected through the MSIPF push action or MSITF twist action injectors. The SFC45 cartridge requires a 3 to 3.2 millimeter incision. The loading of the ICL is a critical component of the overall procedure and should be performed under the operating microscope. The delivery of the implant into the anterior chamber is largely dependent on the precise and careful loading of the ICL. The STAR ICL is made from colomer, a hydrophilic collagen copolymer. To begin, remove the foam-tipped plunger and holder from the package. Insert it into the injector, base first. The vertical tab of the holder is not intended to be snap-locked into the notch of the injector. Keeping the foam-tipped plunger and holder in place, advance the injector cap until the ball end of the plunger interlocks with the injector. A click can be felt and heard when the plunger is properly secured. Retract the injector plunger fully. The foam-tipped plunger will remain locked in place. Remove the holder by sliding it back out of the front of the injector. Place the assembled foam-tipped plunger and injector into BSS, making sure that the tip of the injector and foam-tipped plunger is completely submerged. 
Hydration of the foam-tipped plunger is extremely important as insufficient hydration may cause the ICL to become trapped between the plunger and cartridge upon ICL delivery. Next, remove the injector cartridge from the package and hold it between the thumb and forefinger at the central area near the locking tab. Fill the injector cartridge with BSS. Partially fill the cartridge with a methyl cellulose type viscoelastic, creating a trail out of the cartridge bay. This combination will minimize friction between the ICL and the cartridge walls. Set the cartridge aside. Using a forceps, gently lift the ICL from the vial by carefully grasping the lens haptic. Inspect the ICL under the operating microscope to identify and verify the correct orientation of the lens. The footplate marks on the leading right and trailing left haptic indicate that the correct, convex side of the ICL is facing up. With a cartridge in one hand and the forceps holding the ICL in the other, place the ICL into the cartridge bay so that the long axis of the lens is positioned into the groove under each side rail of the cartridge. This usually requires starting one long edge of the ICL under one rail and rolling the wrist to position the opposite side of the ICL under the opposing rail. Remember that the ICL must be convex in the cartridge with both edges below the side grooves of the cartridge. Close the jaws of the Vizian ICL loading forceps and insert them into the barrel from the front of the cartridge. Advance the forceps through the cartridge until the jaws are about to contact the leading edge of the ICL. Open the jaws of the forceps and grasp the foot plate of the ICL so that the lens positioning mark is aligned with the jaws. Slowly pull the lens into the barrel while moving the cartridge in the opposite direction. Observe the lens positioning marks on either side of the Vizian ICL optic to confirm alignment as you advance the ICL. Continue this process until the ICL is positioned within the cartridge so that its leading edge is adjacent to the end of the cartridge. Release the ICL and remove the forceps. Slide the cartridge into the front of the injector and snap lock the vertical tab into position. Advance the plunger until it is in contact with the lens. The final lens position should be within approximately 2 millimeters of the end of the cartridge. Evacuate any air bubbles from the loaded cartridge with methyl cellulose type viscoelastic injected into the tip of the injector using the cannula to backfill the cartridge. Using the operating microscope, check that the ICL is properly oriented in the cartridge by observing the landmarks located on either side of the optic. These marks should be visible at the 12 o'clock position and be in straight alignment down the shaft. If the ICL is improperly aligned or oriented, the ICL may be twisted and should be injected into the cartridge tray and the loading process repeated. Place the fully assembled injector, tip down, into a container of BSS to maintain lens hydration. The maximum recommended time for the loaded ICL to remain in the injector prior to surgery is one to two minutes. The injector is now properly prepared.